This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Weekend Magic. This week, we're playing That's an Elk, because Oko is Broco. So, I don't know, I'm sure most of you know about Oko by now. Is absolutely ridiculous three-drop planeswalker who can create a food token, or turn something into an elk, or swap targets uh, if it, the creature is power three or less. Absolutely insane. And I don't quite know, I'm not 100% sure if this is the proper shell to build around him. I think we're, I'm getting there. Uh, it does work, works relatively well. Uh, I, I mean, any of these cards that you feel like crafting, even if you don't wanna create the deck are more than more, like Craft Oko, if you play blue or green, He's a great planeswalker to have. Just craft him. He's OP as all get out. Uh, same with Questing Beast. If you play green, craft Questing Beast. Uh, as far as some of the other stuff goes in the deck, eh, like eyes uh, everywhere. You should already probably have a ton of those. Um, Callus Dismissal, great common. You should have a ton of those. If you don't, you should definitely have it if you play blue. Uh, Gilded Goose, great card. That's a good crafting one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a deck full of really good cards, so... I don't want to say, hey, don't craft this deck because a lot of these cards are good and plenty other deck if you play green or blue. If you don't play green or blue, watch the video anyway. Let's get to it here. So we got three Gilded Goose, four Callous Dismissal, three Eyes Everywhere, three Mulan Ying, M Mulan? I'm just going to call her Mulan. Three Mulans, uh, three Okos, four Spark Double, two Questing Beasts, three of the Mesmerizing Benthids, four Bio Essence Hydra, three Flood of Tears, two Great Henge, this is another one I highly advise crafting if you play green, great card, two Hydra Crasis, and then your usual smattering of lands. Uh, I did three Interplanar Beacons just for a little extra life gain. The whole premise of the deck is to turn everything they play that is of any value to them into a 3-3 elk token and then have plenty of stuff on the field that can block that or essentially just eat that 3-3 elk token if they decide to attack you. That's pretty much what I was going for here. I tried to get some things in there to help sort through the deck because you can see the the curb is a little, eh, it's a little off. I, I don't, the problem with green and blue is they don't have very strong low level cards or I should say low casting cost cards. They have some, but they don't, they end up not playing into the mid game very well, like unsummon. You can unsummon something that's just gonna slow them down a turn. And if you can't pick up tempo because you get screwed on a draw, then that unsummon was completely useless. Uh, as far as green goes, you could play a lot of creatures, but I didn't wanna go too creature heavy. I mean, we have 18, but they're all high attack and defense creatures because they need to be able to eat those elk tokens when you turn something into an elk. Uh, but overall, it works relatively well. Uh, it's not super amazing. I think it's getting there. It can definitely get there. There's definitely something here. Just needs a little bit more tweaking. If you craft it and, and tweak it, let me know in the comments what changes you made and how it plays out for you. Okay, I'm going to stop running my mouth. Let's jump into a few games and you can see the hilariousness that is Oko Thief of Crowns. And we are playing ranked. I don't usually play ranked in these videos, but I'm playing ranked right now because I want to try to get my rank up a little bit so I can get a couple of free packs here at the end of the month. That's the only reason I'm playing ranked. This hand is not ideal. We have two callous dismissals, which I think I can make work. I would much prefer something that would maybe give us some card draw, but we also have three lands, so I don't really want to give it up. So I'm going to keep it. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully they don't have a super fast deck. You're playing against some like crazy, crazy fast deck. Uh, you're probably going to lose because this is more of a uh, mid-rangey. And uh, it doesn't, if they flood the board too quickly, you don't really have anything to, to deal with it other than Flood of Tears. But uh, you're not casting that until later on in the game. So I think... Then and I, oh crap, I should have played this first. Um, I messed up there. So we're going to play this. We're going to pay two life and uh, we're going to bounce this guy. 
That'll, that'll slow them down ever so slightly. He'll have to cast it again. Can't. Oh, he's going for flying. Okay, fantastic. Uh, that's the other thing that we have to deal with. But luckily enough, Oko deals with flying relatively well. So what we're going to do is turn this into an elk because it keeps the tokens. So now that's a 4-4. Four, four. He's going to attack in with that. But next turn, that's an elk. Now we got to be careful how many plus one counters this gets on it because... It'll keep those even once we turn it into an elk. That's the downside to turning stuff into an elk. So he's going in on that. Okay, so that actually worked out relatively well for us. So now we're actually... Um, at the beginning of your end step, if an opponent lost life this turn, put a counter. Yeah, but then he can pump this next turn and end up killing... I think what we need to do is, yeah, we're going to elk this because that's more of a threat. And then I'm going to play that. And then we'll play, I think I need to bounce this and have something to sack to that. So I'm going to callous dismissal this. Okay. I think that's the play there. Possibly. If things get out of hand, I'll flood a tears here. He's going to... Ooh. Okay. So we got... See, this This is where it becomes a slight issue because he's casting stuff like crazy. And we have to essentially keep up with it. So let's see if, if he attacks in here. He should go face with this and put a counter on it. But he really wants Oko off the board. So he's going to attack Oko. And it's really not going to do him any good. So that's an elk. And now we'll play Questing Beast. And then we'll pass the turn. So now he can't, I mean, if he attacks in, he's just going to attack into the grinder at this point. And next turn, this will become an elk. Oh, straight up just smited it. Okay, then. You just smite it then. So we need to hope we draw a land here so we can play the Bioessence Hydra. Now see, he should attack in with everything. I would attack in with everything. But he's not going to. Thinking, opponent's thinking really hard here. Come on. Oh, there you go. That's what you want to do. Okay, so we're going to eat that, and I'm actually going to block that there so we keep Oko. Now, this is going to be a pain in my side, but I can uh, eventually just turn that into an elk as well. Okay, so see, this gets a plus one counter now, so this is, this is where it becomes an issue because even if I turn it into an elk, it's going to be a 4-4, four, four, um, but we have the... We're lucky, luckily enough, we have the Hydra here, and we'll just plus one that, and bam, that's an elk. Okay, and then we pass the turn because they're still up on creatures. Now, if he attacks in, he's going to lose both creatures, provided that he or she did not draw into more removal. Doesn't look like they did, or nope, they want to attack in here. So, do they have something that gives their creatures death touch? They might. Let's see what happens. Nope. They're just feeding them to the grinder, which is essentially what you want to happen. Um, and then once again, that's an elk. So it loses death touch, which is super handy. Now we can play eyes everywhere and start scanning through our deck each turn. And you know what? That's a 3-3. So we're just going to attack in with this and start to whittle them down a little bit here. Put the clock on them. Another one of those. Little do you know, that's an elk. You think it's a knight, but it's not. Maybe an elk knight? So this is this is great because this is a perfect example for me to show you how this deck is supposed to work. It doesn't always work, but most of the time, most of the time we can uh, we can manage to make it happen. So now the fun thing is is that's an elk. This gets counters on it. Opponent's probably going to quit here, but then the fun thing is is we play her. And she's not only going to gain us a little life, she's going to eventually help us draw cards and pump up the Hydra. And that's not only an Elk, it's also a 1-3 Elk, and then opponent quits because they know they lost. So we had an absolute great game that last game. This game is probably going to go terrible, but uh, we'll, we'll show you how it goes anyway so you can see what happens when this deck plays terribly. Normally I want to keep this in my hand, but I only have two lands, so I'm going to play it. So if I need to Callous Dismissal something... I can do so. Uh, this is in here to bring back like 
the callous dismissals and uh, flood of tears and all that good stuff. And yeah, that's that's freaking terrible. Um, do we want to wait? Yeah, I think we'll wait. I mean, at most, I'm taking, what, two, maybe three damage next turn. Let's see what else they put. Oh, God, and we're going against tokens. Yeah, like, that needs to go. That's going to be an absolute pain in the butt. And then we're, we're getting land screwed, which is fantastic. So I'm going to bounce that back. So we really need to draw into another land here. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, see, what did I tell you? We won a game, and it was a perfect game, and now we're going to lose miserably. Okay, so there we go. We got a land, but it still doesn't let us do anything until next turn. So opponent is absolutely gaining way too much tempo here. They're going to destroy us, and there's not a lot I can do about it. If I turn this into an elk, it's got two plus one counters on it. So, well, now it's got three. Um... Which is not good. I can turn this into it and I'll lose the proliferate ability. So I need to I need to deal with this. Hopefully we can return it to their hand or something here. Alright, so enters the battle. Oh my god, yeah, they're proliferating like crazy over there. Holy sweet baby Jesus. Yeah, we got absolutely mana screwed here. And I I figured that was gonna happen. Alright, we don't we don't have a choice. I don't want to take five here. Oh, and it's got trample. Great. So I took four anyway. And then uh, we play into that. And there's not a whole lot we can do. I can play the questing beast, but they have a 5-5. Five, five. Hopefully the death touch will scare them a little bit. Probably not because they know that they have me. All they have to do is adapt to this guy and more or less drop a land and attack in. And I'm screwed. So I'm going to give them a good game because they're taking too long to figure that out. And we're going to go on to the next match. Okay, so this hand's not bad because we have the Gilded Goose. That can help us ramp into things. I'm keeping it because we have two Gilded Gooses, two Gilded Geese, whatever. Uh, we also have, I mean, I would only prefer one of these, but this is going to help us with card draw once we get it out. So hopefully we can draw into another creature to reduce the cost of this so that we can get this out faster. Pretty much anything... Any other creature that we draw into is going to help us. I mean, an Oko works too. So we'll play this. We'll gain a life. We'll play this. And uh, now next turn, we can play Oko. And whatever they cast, we can turn into an Elk. Although the geese aren't going to deal with an Elk that well. Okay, I'm not too worried about that. That's not a threat. So hopefully we can draw into something better. Now that we have these, we can actually turn one of these into an Elk. Which, yes, I know, I'm turning my own stuff into an elk. I want to. And that's going to help us out a little bit there. So, and then we're going to go next. And we're just going to attack with that. See if they block. Because we're going against an Elementals deck. Which we should be able, theoretically, to shut down relatively easily. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. You know how magic goes. You never know what the heck is going to happen. All right, so they're doing... Oh, no, they're just playing it. Okay. So that... Um, I'm going to mess with their ramp here. That's actually freaking beautiful. So we're going to play... Can I... Actually, no, I can't play that. Three... Nope, I need another food token. So unfortunately, we cannot mess with their ramp. We're going to have to do this and make a food token and then play this. And, uh, yep, so give me a blue. Blue? Give me a green. Green. It's so wonky the way that that, it should just do it for you. And now we got an 11-11. Hopefully they can't deal with that. I don't know. We'll see what they play. They probably have remove. I don't know. They're mono, are they mono green? Let's see. We'll have to... So far, all they've played is green. I'm expecting them to drop something massive. Questing Beast, maybe? And now next turn, we can play the Henge, which is freaking beautiful. Leyline. Oh, you're ramping into something big. I don't know if it's going to be big enough. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Now, the funny thing about this is, because we have... Oko, and because we have the goose, I can actually make a food token and swap that food token and steal this, which, you know, I think, I think I'm going to do because a lot of times people don't really see that coming. 
They have to negative five him, but and they get a food token, but you know, it's fine. So we'll steal that, and then we should be able to tap that and cast the, the hinge. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, well, then I'll, I'll goose the hinge. <laughs> Either way, I don't care. You wasted, you wasted that, and now I'm going to hit them for 11. We'll keep this back as a blocker. And then end the turn. Now let's hope that they can't deal two damage to Oko, because that's gonna kind of suck. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, I see your 8-7, but little do you know that's an elk. So then what we're gonna do now is go, you're an elk. And then we're going to attack in, and that's GG. Yeah, buddy, you 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 lost. So once again, the deck is not crazy fast. This deck really doesn't have any problems dealing with it. Crazy fast deck, and they're just churning out creatures faster than poor Oko can transform them. Then you're you're probably screwed. But that's the deck. The link for it will be in the description per the usual. Like I said, a lot of these cards are worth crafting. Oko, definitely. Questing Beast, definitely. Henge, definitely. You should probably already have, if you play green or blue or green and blue, probably already have a bunch of the Hydro Crisis, Crassus, however you say it. But yeah, if you play it, let me know what you think down there in those comments. If you make any changes to it, let me know what you made changes to. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider in that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.